Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Dan here from Prompt Up. Happy Friday. Um, today we're going to be looking at a pretty cool prompting method called least to most prompting, and we'll be looking at how you can implement it as well. So it's rather than just going like deep into the research, we'll also look at some implementation steps. So the paper, which will be linked below, um, came out in 2023, um, and the core of what least to most prompting does is that it basically tries to break down problems into subproblems and then solve those subproblems sequentially. So it's two steps. First, it takes a problem and it decomposes it down to subproblems. Um, yeah, the prompt used to decompose the problem to subproblems usually has a few examples showing the model, hey, here are some similar problems that have been here, the decomposed steps for those problems. Now do this next one. And then next, it starts to begin to sequentially solve those smaller problems um and so again a few shot examples are usually included here the previously solved sub problems and solutions and then the next you know sub problem to be answered so you could do this in a single prompt and have all the sub problems be solved at once or you can have a different request for each of the sub problems and then append them so here's what the the flow looks like um so this first stage is the decomposition stage in the prompt here that shows the problem being decomposed actually isn't present, which is what I would want to see, uh, which we'll take a look at in a sec. But then you can see it starts to sequentially solve each sub-question, and it appends both the sub-question 1 and the answer to the LLM with its next sub-question, and eventually it solves you know, the main question here, which is how many times can she slide um, before it closes? And in this case, there's only one sub-question to answer. And so here's a decomposition prompt example. So this is that first step. And so it sends an example of a Q&A where it has a question and it has an answer where it says to solve the problem. It breaks down the steps. And then we send the question that we want to answer. So the output from here will be similar steps kind of mimicking this pattern above. So say probably to solve the problem of, you know, how many times can she slide before it closes? We need to one, two, and three. So then you'll have your sub problems and then you can move on to the next step of actually solving those. And so when we think about least to most versus chain of thought, there's a lot of similarities. They both push the model to do some sort of reasoning. The difference with least to most is that it, it explicitly breaks it down to sub problems. Um, so the top is a least to most example um, where it has you know clear sub problems to solve versus the chain of thought one is, is much more just kind of having all that reasoning in one stream which can be better or worse. Um, I think least to most by in intentionally breaking down to sub problems you can get better uh, results I would say. And so looking at some experiment results quickly, um, this was on a last letter concatenation test. So LLMs were sent a list of words and they had to pull out the last letter of each um, and then concatenate them. And so we can see at least the most does, they're pretty similar. I mean, they're closer at least at the, when the number of words who concatenate is smaller, but you can see the, the delta between the two really grows as the number of letters to concatenate gets larger. And this comes back to the fact that chain of thought is going to be trying to do all of this in one stream versus least to most is breaking it down into, into sub problems. Something interesting here, um, again, for chain of thought at four examples. So now we're basically just looking at the same graph above, but breaking it down at four examples, we're at, you know, 37.8 and then at eight, we're at 38.4. Um, and this just kind of goes back to something we talk about sometimes, which is that the number of examples included in a prompt um, versus performance, like it starts a plateau at, at a certain point. And you're, you're seeing that here. And this is referenced in our, our few shot prompting guide um, and which will be, be linked below. Next up was a, another task for, it's called the scan data set. It's not super important. Um, so we'll actually kind of just skip past this one. And then the last one is a math, a bunch of math reasoning data sets. So three, three data sets here. Um, you see at least the most usually outperforms chain of thought. It's closer in some areas than others. 
And when we, again, kind of extend these to have more reasoning, um, at least the most tends to do even better, um, and the delta between the two increases. But that's the research. Let's look at how we can actually use this. So we're going to write three prompts. One's going to be the one to generate a few shot examples of related or similar problems being broken down into subproblems. So this is that first step where we show the model, hey, here's another problem that's similar, break it down into subproblems, here are the subproblems for it. And then here's the problem we want to actually be broken down. Once we have those two shot examples, um, we'll then um, move on to actually having the model decompose the prompt. And then we're going to solve the subproblems. So we'll look at the prompts here and then we'll look at um, how you can actually implement this. So to generate a few shot examples of problems being broken down to subproblems, the prompt looks something like this. So we're going to say generate a few shot problems for this following task. They should have the example should have a problem and decompose subproblems and it should follow the structure. And then so we're basically what we're going to get here is whatever this task is, let's say it's um, you know, answering customer support tickets, we'll get a few examples of related or similar type of customer support tickets and decompose subproblems. And then we'll have a few examples that we can send along. Again, we have a template here, um, which we'll look at in a second. And then in that second step, we'll pass that same task and we'll say list of decomposed subproblems before solving the task, only send us the subproblems. And then we say, hey, here are those, here are some examples. So then the LLM knows, okay, Generally, these are the kind of ways we should decompose the, the problems here. And this is obviously coming from the previous step. And again, this is a template we have in PromptUp as well. And then in the last step, now that we had those examples, we have the subproblems. Now we can actually go in and solve the task. So we're just going to say solve the task by addressing uh, the subproblems listed below. And then we'll pass the task and then the subproblems, which is our, the output from the step before. And again, we have a template for that but now we're going to chain them together so you can do this in prompt up here so if we go to under the templates tab you'll see all of those three steps um, and you can just go and add these to your library um, so add them each to your library and then under the chains tab which I already have up they will basically just come in create the chain add some links um, and First step, again, passing the few shot, generating some few shot examples based on the problem. So this is a t-shirt uh, return problem. Then we're going to decompose it into subproblems, passing the same task. And now we're saying the output from step one is the examples. So here are the few shot examples for the given problem. You can see they all relate to like, I bought this for this amount. Can I get a price of judgment? So these are our related examples. Then we're going to break down the actual task based on those examples. So here are our subproblems. And now we're actually just going to execute those subproblems in one go. And so it starts to kind of sequentially do it, which you can also see in the final outcome here. And so that's how you can implement it. We have all templates and ready, ready to rock. If you have any questions about it, let me know. Um, What's great about this is it can be used for anything. We're using for a customer support ticket, um, but because of the way that we have things set up, we can have it dynamically adjust to create a few shot examples and subproblems and solve those subproblems for any type of task. So that's it for today. Um, happy prompting. Let me know if you need any help getting up and running with those templates and chains.